hear that Tegua intake really growling. She loves it. Off. I thought I'd better explain where Max Power Mills is, or isn't, he's not here. My old partner in crime, social distancing and all that, means I can't have him in the car coughing all over me. It's probably a good thing though, because this is my review of my car. He's gonna do something else on his M3, which will probably be a snooze fest, so sorry about that. But yeah, these are the two cars that are going head to head in the Max's project car build off, my new EP3 Type R and his E46 M3. So usually when he talks about that car, he starts waffling on about how it's some amazing pure driving machine, yada, yada, yada. And he thinks it will probably quite easily beat the uh, EP3. Now, on paper, you'd think, yeah, the M3's got the power, it's got the heritage, it's got the might of the M division behind it, but these EP3s, man, they're so tunable. There's so many cool parts from on the aftermarket. So as long as I've bought a good base car, hopefully I have, otherwise it's five grand down the toilet, and I think we can tune it in such a way that it's going to beat the M3. And that's just going to be an iconic moment because everyone loves to see the underdog win. The little black EP3 pounds the E46 M3. Wouldn't that be a joyous moment? Anyway, that's a long way off yet. I've got to build this baby up. I've got to tune it. In the meantime, I'm going to give her a first good C&2 on the back lanes. Now she's all serviced up, ready to go. Let's do this. Oh yeah, and while I remember, quite a few guys in the comments from the video we did introducing the car the other day, they're saying, well, what about the full spec? You know, what's it got on it at the moment? And I haven't had time to like shoot some nice pictures or write a story about it yet for maxis.co.uk. So spec off the top of my head, 2.4 bottom end, K20 head, obviously. Uh, Tegua stainless steel manifold and full exhaust system. Skunk racing intake, 70 mil throttle body. Uh, Tegua Group M style carbon inbox. It's got some sort of beefy clutch on it, which is like an on-off switch, but it's all good. It takes the power, so that's nice. Uh, it's got the diff in it. Um, gearbox has been rebuilt. Standard suspension, that is shocks and springs. Standard wheels and tires, standard brakes, standard bodywork. Uh, it's got a nice system in it though. Yeah, they make your face like a target and close your eyes when I hit it. It's like a double bin, touchscreen, Pioneer head unit, and it's got a JBL 12 in a box and a boot, J JBL 5 channel amp, some JBL 6x9, 6x9s, 6x9s six six baby, in the rear parcel shelf, uh, and it's got some component speakers and tweeters, so yeah, it pumps man, it's nice, you know, I'd have bought the car without a stereo, but no, it's got some pumping tunes in it, it's sweet. So yeah, you know, pretty standard car on the outside. It's black. Bodywork on the whole is good. Needs a good polish up. Front bumper needs a respray. From uh, the uh, the bonnet's got the stone chips on it from like you know thousands of miles of driving. But you know it's got 140k on the clock. Although the engine's about 30k old. Um, but yeah, it should all clean up nice. Might get the uh, front bumper with the bonnet wrapped just for now until I can like sort out a paint job. Other than that, nice straight car, you definitely need suspension and what have you. Although, on the initial driving that I've been doing on this, stand suspension feels pretty good. The dampers are obviously working all right, the springs, you know, they're nice and firm without being crazy firm, but it definitely needs to be lower to look cool when it definitely needs some new wheels and tires. I also chatting to the guys at Tegua about some other bits and bobs that we're gonna need going forward, like, you know, suspension and brakes and what have you, but yeah, the shopping list is long for that stuff, but I thought I'd give it a good test today, give it a good flash on my favorite back lanes. Kind of feedback to you guys, you know, what she's like. Again, what she like is an almost standard car, albeit with a, you know, K24 in there, and uh, yeah, so far she drives nice, doesn't rattle too much in the wrong places. Aircon is cold. This is the only car I've had with aircon that works. Check that out. I bought a car with aircon that works. So yeah, so far so good, but let's see how she stacks up on the back lanes with plenty of revs and a little bit of a pasting. Got it, had it all serviced up and ready to rock. She's feeling good, she's all warmed up. You've got to warm up these VTEX, they don't like to do it cold. So yeah, these are the lanes I use when I want to have some fun. I know them like the back of my hand. So there we go. Second gear in. Ooh. Pretty jazzy. Which we like. 
like us modified. It's not crashing around or anything like that. Lorry in the middle of the road. It's giving me sweaty palms, which is always a good sign of a car. It makes your palms sweaty. You know you're enjoying yourself. Third gear, picking up. I've got to say, the extra 400 cc's from the 2.4 litre bottom end makes all the difference. 25% more torque on this car. Which is loads, right? And it just means you don't have to really wring its neck. I mean, obviously it's a VTEC, so you kind of got to wring its neck. It's rude not to. That's what they love. But, it just gives you a few more options, you know? The clutch is pretty heavy, but it's upgraded. expensive and then just settle into the car a bit more. Thing just feels rapid, man. The way that power builds is you know, six, seven, eight thousand RPM. 